There is one point in this film where Bhumi shouts, smash the patriarchy. And then a student gets up and says, Mujhe nahi hona patla. And then one of the girl gets up and says, Mujhe nahi karni apni eyebrows wax. And another one gets up and says, Mujhe nahi penni bra. And Bhumi goes, smash the patriarchy. I started to miss Veere the wedding. Hey, listen, I'm all for films that aim to explore the sexual and physical desires of women. I am all for feminist themes in movies and series that not only expose the patriarchal setup of our systems today, but also portray a character that breaks from those very shackles. But what I am not game for is just lowbrow, lazy and forgettable films that suck you in with its titillating, cheap thrill marketing visuals and aim with its narrative to preach about the most complex topics in the most banal and simplistic manner. I did not know that a movie had the capability to make me miss the camaraderie among the friend group in Veere the Wedding. But thank you for coming exactly extracts that form of nostalgia within me where I felt the tale of those women was far more compelling, effective and really spoke to women across demographics. Thank you for coming focuses on Kanika Kapoor played by Bhumi Pednekar who in her early 30s still has not experienced an orgasm. Being distraught and unlucky in the dating scene, she wants to settle for the bare minimum and decides to get married to a man who is obsessed with her. On the night of her roka, however, she experiences an orgasm. The problem being, she doesn't remember who gave it to her. In the quest to find the man who somehow navigated his way to her G-spot, a comedy of errors followed by some gyan forms the basic premise of thank you for coming. Here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch this movie in theaters or not. The good. A good setup and some funny moments. You know, I was initially invested in this film. Who doesn't like a good casual time at the movies, yaar? This is why I didn't even mind a movie like Vire the Wedding. Because it was a carefree film that did not force themes down my throat, but organically developed a storyline around women who were messed up in their own way. Kanika Kapoor, played by Bhumi, is introduced and set up brilliantly. She is sexually frustrated and is at that point of her life where she wants to explore her own desires but the confines of society want her to settle down immediately. Her nani telling her, GST bhar ke kya kar liya? Apni maang bhar, maang. The friend group in their early 30s have distinct personalities and the film briefly has moments that make you chuckle. When denied sex, her boyfriend reprimands her by saying, You only said sex is not important, a connection is the real deal. Bhumi hilariously replies, Garibo ko bhi to kehna padta hai ki paisa is not important. I started to think, oh, this might be a genuinely funny ride. But as a wise man once said, it's the hope that kills you. And oh boy, do you fall flat on your face as the movie progresses in its running time. The redeeming portions being Anil Kapoor's hilarious act in flexing his connections with Gulzar Saab and a rendition of the iconic introduction of Kyuki Saas Bhi Kabhi Bahu Thi. Shehnaz Gill adds some spunk but she's just playing an exaggerated version of herself rather than someone strikingly different from her personality that we've seen on her talk show. Natasha Rastogi as Bhumi's mother has the most nuanced and effective moments from the film, even though it makes no sense that she is the daughter of the most guarded and conservative woman. Instances of vulnerability and reality faced. The group of friends are unique in their own way and while I can commend Bhumi for really giving it her all, I wasn't really blown away by her depiction of Kanika's mental breakdown. I've honestly seen Bhumi perform way better in other films and it probably has to do with the director she's worked with and the themes that those films explored. This is definitely not her finest. I actually feel from the group, Shibani Bedi as the single mother conveyed far more conviction in her dialogue delivery and moments of anguish. It doesn't go totally downhill as there are themes that the film explores beyond sexual exploration that I'm sure many women will empathize and connect with. It would be insane for me as a man to deny that and sound like a mansplaining uncle if I said all the messaging misses the mark. The movie sheds light on the conditioning of women from a young age, the dependence on finding a prince charming to feel whole, the bullying at a formative age that gets imprinted in personalities as they become adults, the patriarchal roles women should play to feel accepted, the shaming one gets subjected to as single mothers, the problem society has with happy women, the embarrassment that comes with simply demanding what one wants personally, both emotionally and physically, 
body shaming, revenge porn. But do you notice how as I talk, I slightly got exhausted? And this is precisely what you will feel too, because the themes of the film never end. Like a grocery shopping list, like ticking off boxes, doing a crash course on complex topics, and sadly it's unconvincing, especially in the concluding moments. The underwhelming aspects. PJ's and crass humour. While I did mention that the film has some genuinely funny moments, it would be hard to deny that it has its fair share of crass humour and PJ's. The parlour girl looks at the conditioning of Bhoomi's nether regions and says, Jue a jayengi, isse achha bikini karwa le. Shehnaz, shocked at the very fact that Bhoomi has never had an orgasm, says, Mujhko to shishe mein khud ko dekh ke hi aa jata hai. Bhoomi explains the kind of love she wants, Veer Zara wala pyaar aur Sunny Leon wala bhochar. It's this lowbrow humour that often makes you roll your eyes through the running time and come to the conclusion that the film just isn't that funny. And for a film that is aimed to be carefree and still give a social message, it just barely does both of them right. And this is precisely why you miss Veeray the Wedding and that's not a compliment for a film. Confusing themes and dull second half it is in the second half and the quest to find the man who gave her an orgasm where the movie completely goes in overdrive mode of the social themes it can focus on and give you gyan about. While the attempt is admirable by the makers to go beyond the sexual exploration of Bhumi's character, it gets exhausting when each character in her life is aimed to convey a social theme. The film sheds light on the transgender community and a sequence dedicated to a drag night titled Pari Hume. A heartfelt scene at an airport showcases Bhumi shouting, Thank you for coming, to which the guy replies, It's your turn to come, and one should feel emotional in this odd interaction outside the airport. A random gay angle is casually dropped and one just goes on this ticking spree. The sad reality is that while the film wants us to care about the friends and their personal turmoils, there is barely any time spent on them, with majorly the core theme being Bhumi's struggle. So Dolly's equation with her husband, Shibani's experience as a single mother is barely explored. But the makers want you to care about their friendship. But how will we, when you don't even get an insight about them? The film's most lazy sequence presents Bhumi going in speech mode, something that most of our social comedies tend to do on the nose and ineffective messaging. In this sequence, like a Twitter troll, buzzwords and statements like self-love and smash the patriarchy are flung around without any care in the world and lacks any kind of depth. I started to wonder, are feminist films or movies that genuinely want to explore the experience of women in today's society reach such a low level in quality? Is Fleabag and the bold type the gold standard of female storytelling that doesn't get preachy and is genuinely hilarious? I would love some suggestions from you in the comments below, both in India and the West, where you feel like feminist writing and portrayals have been actually effective and hilarious. I can't sit through school kids shouting, Nahi hona patla mujhe, nahi karwani mujhe eyebrows wax, nahi pehenna bra mujhe, nahi karna peri pona mujhe, and applaud the makers as if they've done something revolutionary. Thank you for coming was initially entertaining, but faltered to become all over the place eventually. And that was a video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about thank you for coming. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle is right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.